water pollution. This is something that everyone should be very concerned about because water is essential for life and we don't want pollution in that water. Um, so what pollution is, is basically anything that's harmful to the environment. So pollution could be um, actual trash or it could be a chemical. It could be something you can see or something that you can't see. But anything that is going to be harmful or poisonous to the environment, that is what we consider a pollutant. Um, so we're just going to look at different types of pollution, the main pollutants in North Carolina, and then why it is that they are a problem. So these are the different things we're going to look at. Point and non-point source pollution. We'll look at sediments, stormwater runoff, heavy metals, and then we'll look at something that we call thermal pollution. So there's two types of pollution, either point source or non-point source pollution. If something is point source pollution, I can point to that thing and say, that is my source of pollution. It's something I can see. It's coming from a single identifiable source. Um, and the main example they use for point source pollution is a pipe. So if you have an industry that has waste leaking from a pipe into a lake, I could point to that pipe. It's a single identifiable source. And I can say that is the source of pollution for this lake. Um, or if, say, I'm on a boat and I have um, oil and I just dump oil overboard off the side of my boat, um, you could point to me and say that is the single identifiable source of pollution that is going into the lake. Um, point source pollution is not as big of a problem as it used to be because with those single identifiable sources, because we can see them, we can limit them. If um, the government sees that an industry is leaking, um, you know, toxic metals into the water, they can say you have to stop that in order to protect the public. Um, so those types of pollutions are a lot more regulated so they can be controlled. What's a lot harder to control is something that we call non-point source pollution. Non-point source pollution is something that you cannot just see and point to. It's not a single source. It's not easily identified. The main example when you're looking at non-point source pollution is runoff. Because when you have runoff, you have people who have thrown, um, you know, like fast food bags out their windows. You have people who have cut fish in line from their um, boats and just left it in the water. You have the exhaust from cars, oil that leaks from cars. When people wash their cars in their driveway, all the soap that runs down. Um, you have all those different things. And so it's not one single source, it's a bunch of sources all over the place. And because you can't see where they're coming from as easily, they're not as easily identified, and so they are not as easily regulated. Um, and so they're what we consider non-point source. So non-point source pollution will affect groundwater and surface water, because sometimes the pollutants on the ground, although the ground can filter out many things, it can't filter out everything. And so some of that pollutant can get into the groundwater, or if the water's running off, it will, as it goes over the land, any pollutants that are on the grass, it will take it with it and deposit it into the water. Um, so this is almost impossible to regulate just because it's everywhere. Um, and the best way to stop non-point source pollution is for people to do something about it. So individuals taking action. So if you're used to littering by throwing stuff out of the car, stop. One, that's lazy. You don't need to do it. Wait till you get home and throw things away. Um, but you are what's causing a lot of pollution, a lot of harmful effects to other things, even though you don't realize it because out of sight, out of mind. But if you stop doing that and everybody gets in that mindset of we're not going to just throw things out the window, we're not going to litter, then there are sources of non-point source pollution. They would start to go away. So back in the day, and this is not true, but back in the day, a lot of people thought the best solution for pollution is dilution. And so basically what they thought is, well, the ocean is big enough, so if we put all of our pollution in the ocean, it's not going to affect anything because there's so much water in it, it's not going to have a harmful effect. Well, what if I gave you, you know, a big jug of water and I just said, well, I only put a little bit of poison in it. You know, it's very diluted poison. You still aren't going to want to drink that water. Um, and so as people started realizing... Um, the more pollution they put in their water, it was having an effect. They realized the solution for pollution is not dilution. The solution for pollution is people taking individual responsibility and they stop polluting things. Um, and that's what came to a bunch of different laws. So this is just showing you a picture of where all our different runoff can come from. You've got your agriculture runoff. You've got urban runoff. The urban runoff is going to have a lot of like oil and gas and trash in it. Um, your 
agriculture runoff is going to have pesticides and manure and your residential runoff will also have a lot of um, like oil gas it also can have soap like i mentioned about with washing your car um, different pesticides from people having gardens and stuff um, so all that different runoff because this is a watershed it all goes into that single source and then um, we end up having to drink it so when water is polluted and infiltrating the ground we call that leaching so remember, when we talk about infiltration, that simply means water that is absorbed or soaking into the ground. Well, if it's clean water soaking in the ground, we call it infiltration. If the water is polluted or contaminated, we say that water is leaching into the ground. Um, it's the same thing, it just means it's soaking into the ground, but by referring it to either um, leaching water or infiltrating water, we it just lets you know, is that water source clean or is that water source dirty? So when you think leaching, think polluted water soaking into the ground. Now we're going to look at our different pollutants, and I'll tell you what's most important to know from each slide. So sediments is the number one source of water pollution in North Carolina. So that is something that's a big deal to know. Um, the reason sediments are an issue is because as we urbanize areas, we get rid of vegetation. If you think back to our um, unit on uh, erosion and weathering, what prevents erosion is vegetation because the roots anchor the soil down. If you start to remove those plants, you've now removed their anchor and all the dirt can get washed away. So as people start building, they remove the dirt, or they remove the roots, and that allows the dirt to start moving and to get into different bodies of water. This can be an issue for many reasons. For example, the, um, and you don't have to write all of these down, but um, it causes issues with the fish um, because it will start to clog their gills, so maybe you know that one. Um, it can make the water really cloudy, and that prevents fish from being able to see their food. Also, the more water that, or the more dirt that piles into the water, the more shallow that water gets, and that's bad for your fish. Um, and it can also prevent your vegetation growth, because if you have um, if you have sediment that is making the water really cloudy, well, vegetation needs the sunlight in order to do photosynthesis. So if the water is real cloudy, the plants can't get all the sunlight that they need in order to do photosynthesis. So the sediment's going to be a bigger issue than a lot of people think or recognize. Um, and it is the number one source of pollution in North Carolina. Now, another source of pollution is your heavy metals, or sometimes they call them toxic metals. The different, there's four main, there's many different ones, but the four main ones we look at are arsenic, mercury, lead, and cadmium. Arsenic is actually something that's naturally found in the ground. And so if you ever build a house or you dig a well, they ask you if you want to do arsenic testing because if you are drilling through rock that naturally contains arsenic, that means that arsenic is going to get into your well water and you're going to slowly poison yourself over time. Um, mercury and lead and cadmium, those are more things that people get into the water. Lead can get into the water from pipes that um, if water is going through lead pipes, it will gradually absorb lead as it goes. Um, and then mercury and cadmium, a lot of times you find it in toxic waste. So you can get um, toxic metals in the water from old pipes, drilling wells, from mining, throwing away batteries, and those batteries sitting in the, land, um, the landfills. As that water gets on them, it leaches into the ground, because remember, leaching is polluted water, and that can get into the groundwater. And then also, if you dump untreated waste into um, water. And so this is one thing that the government's been regulating a lot, because it's cheap for an organization to just throw all their toxic waste into the water and hope, you know, it doesn't do anything. But if they start treating it, although it may be more cost effect or more expensive, it's much better for the population around them. So at one point, Japan was actually dumping a lot of mercury into the water, into the ocean. And all of a sudden, if you'd like to watch the video below, you can click that link. Um, but all these people started dying and um, just getting incredibly ill because as you drink or eat toxic metals, they don't leave your body. They accumulate in you. And so these people, were, they were eating the fish from the water and then drinking water, and they were getting all these heavy metals from it, and they were dying and being poisoned because of that. Um, and then eventually that was realized what was causing it. Um, it uh, industry dumping all those waste and they were stopped from doing that but we still have mercury issues in our water now because of that from way back in the day 
these are some problems caused by toxic metals. Um, you do need to know what bioaccumulation is. Remember, the prefix bio means living, and if something is accumulating, it's building up over time. So bioaccumulation is living things that are accumulating these heavy metals as they get older and they're in the water longer. So for example, fish. Um, you see the little fish at the front, they have no mercury levels in them. Um, and then as time goes on and these fish grow and get older, they steadily start to accumulate the metal. And so as, you, as they get older and bigger, they have more and more heavy metals in them. Um, then you have something called biomagnification. This means that the heavy metals are going to be, there's going to be more amounts of them as you get higher up in the food chain than smaller down on it. So if you have these little shrimp and then you have fish that eat the shrimp, the fish have their own uh, mercury in them, and then they eat shrimp that have mercury in them, and so that stays in them, and so now the fish have double the amount of mercury. Then you have a seal that has its own mercury in it, eat fish that have mercury in it, and so now the seal has its mercury, the fish's mercury, and the shrimp, shrimp's mercury. Then you have a polar bear, that, polar bear that eats the seal, and now it has all of their mercury in them. So the higher up the food chain, the more mercury you see. Um, this is one reason why if you are pregnant, you actually have to be really careful in the amount of seafood you eat or the type of seafood you eat. Because if you eat, um, see, and this is really for not just pregnant people, but anybody, if you are eating or drinking something that has heavy metals in it, your body doesn't get rid of them. It holds on to them. And the longer you do that and the more heavy metals you consume, the more impact it makes on your body. Some of the impacts heavy metals have on people um, if they are consumed is they can cause cancer, they re um, reduce development, and then they can cause nervous system issues. And your nervous system is going to be like your spine and your brain. It causes many, many bad issues with that. Um, next type of pollution we have is fertilizer. So fertilizer is really good for helping plants grow. That's why we use it. We have natural fertilizer, or we have what we call chemical fertilizer. Chemical fertilizer contains a lot of nitrogen and phosphorus in it. That nitrogen and phosphorus is what helps plants grow. Um, as farmers or people put fertilizer out, when it rains, that fertilizer gets washed into large bodies of water, and that fertilizer helps algae to grow. Um, when algae grows, it causes a algae bloom that we call eutrophication. This is very important to note. Fertilizer washed in water creates algae blooms called eutrophication. And maybe try practice saying it, eutrophication. Um, and I will explain exactly how eutrophication works and the issues that it causes. So as the so imagine you're a farmer and you have a cornfield. You put the um, fertilizer down. It rains. That rain washes off or causes runoff of the fertilizer to get in your body of water. So your pond in this picture, and that fertilizer is then going to cause or give the water all the nutrients it needs for algae to grow and take over the lake. So as this algae grows, it forms a thick layer and that blocks sunlight. And so now the plants at the bottom of the pond can no longer get the sunlight they need. And so they can't do photosynthesis, and so the plants die. Well, if the plants die, then all the little fish that ate those plants, it can no longer eat them, and so that the fish die. And so if the blocking of the sunlight doesn't cause um, the death of the entire ecosystem, once that um, algae bloom dies, that can then cause the rest of the ecosystem co to collapse. Um, when the algae bloom dies, it actually uses up all the dissolved oxygen in the water, and that can cause the fish to suffocate, and then they also will die. And then again, again, you have this complete collapse of an ecosystem, all because fertilizer got washed into the body of water. So it blocks the sunlight, causes plants to die, and then once the algae dies, it uses up dissolved oxygen, and that can create many issues for the rest of the fish. Um, just like we have to breathe oxygen to live, Fish and aquatic species, they also um, breathe, quote-unquote, breathe water in, um, but what the, or oxygen in, but what they're breathing in is dissolved oxygen because they're taking in water instead of air. And so that's very important to them. So that is eutrophication. Eutrophication comes up on many different um, units that we have. It'll come up at least two more times, so make sure that you know eutrophication. So how can we prevent eutrophication? 
Well, the, a big way is to use a natural fertilizer such as compost rather than your chemical ones. Natural fertilizers or like compost can be created even from the leftover food you have. Um, and they, they will set aside and decay and create like this natural organic layer like what you find in the O horizon of soil. Now, other things you can do is don't fertilize before it rains because then all that fertilizer is going to get washed away. And then use less, um, protect your soil. If you, and I'll show you in our farming unit um, ways to protect soil, but if you make sure you have healthy soil, you don't need as much fertilizer, and that way fertilizer won't get washed away. Um, pesticides. This is another thing that is found a lot in your um, agriculture areas, but also urban areas because people use pesticides in their um, gardens. So pesticides kill um, insects or they'll kill weeds. And then as that water gets, or as you have runoff, it will wash pesticides into water. And the main disease that pesticides cause is cancer. Um, and so that's the main thing you need to know. Pesticides get into water through um, runoff, and they are very, very much known for causing cancer. Um, if you would like to watch a video on a pesticide called DDT, some of these links are very interesting. Um, I maybe focus on the first two. This one's 11 minutes, the other one's three minutes, and I don't know how long that one is. But DDT was a um, chemical used in um, war, and then they altered it a little bit because they realized it's a nerve agent, meaning it attacks the nervous system. And they realized, well, they, we could alter this a little bit and use it to kill different insects. And so people started spraying DDT everywhere. They would spray it in their homes. They put it in paint, and they'd paint their houses with it. They would spray it directly on children to kill lice or anything like that. Um, I mean, DDT was just, it was everywhere. Planes would fly over neighborhoods just dropping DDT. And then eventually this one woman said, hey, dropping poison everywhere probably isn't the wisest idea. Um, it's going to have effects on us even if we don't realize it. And then people kept ignoring her, and eventually they realized, oh, DDT is actually killing everything, not just the bugs that we wanted dead. And so they eventually stopped using it. But those are some interesting videos if you'd like to watch. Um, and so I think this is our last form of pollution. It's called thermal pollution. When you're talking about thermal pollution, you're talking about temperature. So remember, we said pollution is anything that is harmful to the environment, whether that is a chemical or whether it's trash or a temperature. So fish and aquatic plants are very sensitive to temperatures in your water. If you've ever gone somewhere um, like a carnival and you've won a fish or you've went to a pet store and bought a fish, they give you the fish in a little baggie. And what you're supposed to do is put the bag in the aquarium and let the bag adjust to the temperature of the water. Because if you just dump your fish into the water, if it's a drastic change of temperature, it actually could cause the fish to go into shock and it could kill it. Um, and so those aquatic species are so sensitive to the temperatures of water that if you have somewhere like an industry that is using water to cool off its machinery and then they put that water back into um, the lake it's getting it from, it will cause that whole lake to become much warmer. And as you have that warmer water, it will um, remove dissolved oxygen and that will cause um, the fish to become suffocated. So this is the big thing to note. Warm water causes dissolved oxygen to decrease. So thermal pollution decreases your dissolved oxygen. The main way that you get thermal pollution is from industries that are using water to cool off its machinery so it doesn't overheat but then it just puts that water directly back into the lake without letting it cool first. Um, and so that is the big issue with your thermal pollution. And let's clear the screen and see what's left. Um, and so there's only, let's see, should I keep going? I'll go ahead and end this. So these are the six main forms of pollution. We had point source, non-point source, sediments, toxic metals, fertilizer, pesticides, and thermal pollution. Um, make sure you are just familiar with what they cause and how they get into the water. And we'll end this video and then we have a little bit more to talk about for pollution and then that will be it.